All right. Welcome everyone to another episode of Marty Wong Chat, where I get to talk to my friends a little bit online, especially during quarantine. It sucks for me, like pretty badly. Um, this show right now is live on Twitch.、Uh, of course, you can also watch this on YouTube, on Spotify, on listen to on Spotify, on iTunes,、uh, everywhere.、Uh, so you know, feel free to enjoy this anywhere you want. Tonight, I have my friend Emma Ramp here.、Um, She's a big streamer.、Uh, she, I don't. Know, she works really, really hard. You know, I'll let her introduce herself. It'd be easier. Hey there, how are you doing? Okay, <laughs> pretty good.、Uh, if you haven't heard about me, I'm Amaranth. I have been streaming for almost four years now. I do a variety of content, IRL streams. I play games only sometimes. Do ASMR. I do a lot of fitness streams. I like to have streams with my animals as well. Big dog lover. And、uh, that's pretty much it. I stream my life. I've done sleep streams recently. I pretty much stream every day, all the time. You never stop. You were just doing、uh, a just dance stream earlier, right? Just now. Yeah, I was. How was that? Tiring, but really fun. It's one of my favorite things to do. It's my cardio. I don't like running, so <sighs> that's how I work out. I like right. Right now, for me, I don't think we're. I mean, we are allowed to go outside, kinda, but. Not really at the same time. So, like, they want us、yeah. to stay at home. At least for in LA,、um, they're like, "Oh, you." It's weird because they have all these rules. Like, you either have to stay at home or you have to wear a mask when you go outside. But they can't really tell you not to go outside at the same time. It's, it's strange.、Mm. Um, yeah, that's here right now too. Have to wear a mask because as, just started. As long as you go saying like, "Oh, I'm on my way to the supermarket," then they can't really stop you. But you can't really go. Out and about, like to a trail or something. Right.、Um, mm-hmm. Where are you? I forget. Are you in California? Texas. Texas. Right.、Um, yeah. No, I have a few friends there. I was talking to Turney last week too, about you know how it's like. Aren't you guys opening up soon? I- yeah, I think like within the next week or so, there's going to be a- establishments open.、Huh. Um, but we have to wear a mask still. So. It's not as restrictive here. Like you can still go to a park; they're not going to stop you. But, but now you just have to wear a mask when you're out, or else you can get a fine or go to jail. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to enforce it though because it is. I I don't know.、Um, there's there's protests everywhere about people saying like we should you know open up the state、uh, the state again. I get it. I get it. Money reason or you know、um, we have don't want government to have too much power. But overall, it's I, I don't know. It, it's a strange time, but is it better for you because you're streaming at home? Yeah, I don't really find it much different for me, just because I was basically quarantining myself for the past four years of streaming,、um, you know. But as far as the ability to go out, I do miss that. I do miss like going to do IRL streams. That was always fun for me,、mm. and now like not having the option sucks. Even though I didn't go out that much, anyways. But that's about it as far as what's changed. Yeah, I, I miss going to conventions.、Um, I was supposed to go to a conventions every other week before this happened. Oh, really? That's a lot. It is a lot. That's like my average. My average is about like every other week.、Um, I don't know. That's that's a lot of conventions. I mean, every time you see me, it was at a convention so far, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it, ma- it makes sense. Just for me, I go like to only a few a year, so it's crazy. I can't. Even imagine how much traveling that must be. <sighs> always moving around. I actually just put my suitcase away、uh, last night. Well, when I say last night, I mean this morning.、Um, my sleep schedule is a mess. My sleep schedule is. Oh yeah. I actually just woke up like half an hour ago. What? Yeah. It's <laughs> crazy.、Uh, yeah, my sleep schedule is. Well, it it changed every day. When I had convention, it used to be better. It used to be like, okay, I will. Uh, sleep very late, and then maybe even like three in the morning, or whatever, and then I'll wake up、uh, maybe at noon. That's okay-ish. And then after that, you know, a convention kind of reset my schedule because every other week I have conventions, so I kind of have to like go to the con.、Right. So I have to be at normal people schedule.、Um, but then, <laughs> because now we don't have that, my sleeping schedule is still kind of a pattern, but it's not every day. It's like every week. I've I would have one day normal, one day wake up late. The next day, wake up really late, and then the next day, like, didn't sleep until like maybe nine a.m. And then,、wow. yeah, 
And then we wake up at right, 6, 7 p.m. horribly. And then suddenly I'll wake up uh, and then the next day I'll just not sleep for a day. So I can reset. And the day after I'll just reset. And then it just um, become fine. So I don't know. And that's kind of repeat every week. It's, it's random. I'm doing a, I mean, this vodcast kind of help. So I'm more normal-ish. Well, that's good. Yeah, for me, I just don't even have a sleep schedule. I just nap, basically. I wouldn't call it a full night of sleep because I go to bed like at 3 and I wake up at 6 sometimes. Like AM. AM to AM. Like, it's bad. Do, it's awful. I feel like um, your schedule is based on your streams. Do you have a stream schedule or it's just like always? I, I, I did. I was getting one and then the corona hit. So I started streaming all day, literally. And doing sleep streams actually has helped me sleep more because on those I sleep extra long. But on my days when I'm not doing a sleep stream, I'll often get anywhere from like three to five hours of sleep. It's atrocious. It's I, trash. I, I, I think I hop in once to see because I, you know, you're on my list of uh, recommended and like friends and stuff on this on Twitch. So every time you stream and it show up, but you're always on there. I'm like, wow, she's streaming again. Um, the sleeping ones, right? Those are those. Um, easier i don't know because like is you put it under no category because i remember like sleeping wasn't allowed before and then they kind of let it happen or I, I don't know what's the rule for that um you can you can as long as you don't put it in a category you can sleep on stream and i just actually sleep people try to wake me up with the text-to-speech donations uh -huh. sometimes it works other times i don't even hear it but um it's my favorite is when they just spam the same thing in a row that usually will wake me up but it's like seven 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 i don't know if you've seen that before people just spam nonsense <laughs> and it's um, not that part yeah it's it's a good time uh, i i quite enjoy it actually because i get to sleep extra and i often have my dog in the room I see too, and he cuddles with me <clears throat> i see a puppy yeah. that's very cute uh thank you no it's, it's great i mean that is it's kind of like sleeping on uh, on your job. I mean, I kind of did that before at my exactly. old job, but not supposedly allowed. <laughs> oh, oh, whoops! <laughs> but it's okay. I got my job done, so not not really big. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I uh, that's that's a problem. Like I used to work a desk job, a normal person job. So I was right. Just you know, um, nine to five. Uh, sometimes remote. Uh, sometimes at office. But it's I don't know. It's did, did you work a retail or like normal job or day job, desk job before? Um, I actually did character performing for children's oh. birthday parties and like hospital visits. I, I basically a Disney princess without being a theme park. Um, I, was my job. I had lots of friends. So, no, I never did retail. Um, I did that. And I also worked at the opera in Houston and the ballet doing costuming for a while, like seasonal help. Mm. And so that's basically what I did before I started streaming and just costuming and then being a Disney princess. So how, how did you find out streaming? I kind of randomly got into it. Well, I knew I knew that it was a thing just because like I was often watching like Game Grumps and stuff and occasionally mm. they would talk about like live streaming and Twitch. I mostly was just watching YouTube Let's Plays, but then uh, Twitch invited me to start streaming costumes because at the time they were doing a creative category right when they first started it back in 2016. That was really recent. And they then. said, "Hey, hmm? well, well, recent because they they contacted me too about it because um, you know I do a lot of cosplay photo stuff and I work with lots of cosplayers mm -hmm. and I was um, representing a few cosplayer at that time too. So yeah, I remember when they first started. Um, I forgot what's the lady's name, um, but yeah, they reached out to me as well when they first started. So it's actually not that long ago." It felt like, it felt like longer, but I know it wasn't that long ago, 2016. Oh. Four years. Yeah. Five? Four years. Dude, you grew a yep. lot since then. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's kind of insane. I think I started with like 15 viewers when I started streaming. Uh-huh. And then now it's... And that's still like, I feel like that's still a lot for a first stream because, um... I got lucky. I already had like a cosplay page mm -hmm. in Instagram, which was very small at the time, maybe like a thousand followers, but better than nothing. So, and I think that's a lot of us. Like I got, I've gotten many people asking us how we are, um, how do we get popular on the internet? You know, uh, there's many ways, but I feel like 
some of us just got very lucky as well. Like we work really hard. You mm -hmm. work really hard. Like every time people uh, ask me about you or they talk about you at all, I say, I don't, I don't care. But like, whatever you say, this girl works really, really hard. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm just very motivated and I try to keep my goals in mind. So how do, I just keep pushing every day. How do you keep yourself motivated? Like all the time? Like keep, um, this, this. Because I have like <laughs> only one passion in life and that is to save animals. And so that's my, that's what I'm saving for every day. I want to open a rescue shelter, like a big ranch style one. That's like no kill, no nonprofit for dogs and horses. So every day I'm just like, oh, I got to keep streaming so I can get to my goal faster and go do what I'm, what I've always wanted to do, you know? So that's how I look at it. People are like, how can you just stream every day? Because like every day I look at it and I think, okay, if I wake up and I stream, I'm one step closer to my goal. Uh -huh. I think because you never know what happens on stream, right? Yeah. Like someday it would be my, maybe a high viewer day, maybe you get a lot of subs and you get you know, a lot of traction, someone features you, someone hosts you, like every day is an opportunity to grow. Mm -hmm. And the faster mm -hmm. I grow, the sooner I can save animals. So I'm just like, oh, I got to do it. I can't risk that not streaming on a day. You know, if I if I have nothing to, better to do, I might as well. If I have something to do, that's like a YouTube video or a photo shoot, then I'll take most of the day off and stream at night. But if I don't have anything lined up for the day, then every day is another chance to keep growing. So that's how I look at it and stay motivated. That's I couldn't do it if I didn't have like a really like strong passion. See, yeah, that's I don't think yeah. I could do it. what I was wondering too, because it's hard to do it because you are so consistent and that's, that is some sense, chat like admirable. It is, it is hard. Like there are days, it's like working out, you know, like there are days like mm -hmm. I can just lay in bed and just play games or like, you know, not do anything, uh, but you're incredibly consistent. Um, how far are you from your goal, from this dream? Um, it's hard to say because the the goals that I have in mind are kind of changing as I go along. Like I'm researching more and discovering like, oh, I want to do that too. Like there's like other facilities I'm inspired by. And like they have like amazing state-of-the-art like air conditioning bedrooms for dogs to stay in and like half acre play yards with pools and each yard for dogs to mm -hmm. play in. So like as I continue to grow and find out more, my goals get bigger. So I'm not, I'm not really sure how far away I am exactly, at least a few years for sure. Mm. Um, and then even then I'm still going to be planning to stream it. So I won't be like able to retire or anything. And I wouldn't want to, cause I want to educate people and bring awareness. But um, I think social media is a very powerful tool for that. You can find adopters, you can find fundraising opportunities, you can find people to network with. So I, I don't think that I'm close but I think maybe hopefully within the next five years or so, I can start that endeavor. Okay. If I stay on this trajectory. I mean, if I grow a crazy amount, I could start it sooner. But um, that's what I'm looking at right now is starting it hopefully within the next five years. If Twitch stays the same and doesn't shut down or anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of us are relying on the platform. Uh, some are on Instagram, some are on Twitter. Uh, some of us are on... Um, you know, uh, whatever YouTube uh, is, is kind of scary where our livelihood is, you know, kind of stuck by a platform, but hopefully we have enough, you know, skills that can trans transfer from one to another. Mm -hmm. I'm still kind of new from uh, the streaming world. I started seriously, maybe, I don't know, like less than half a year ago. So still relatively new, um, but I don't know. It's hard right now. I feel like it's harder to grow too because we have many people oh, yeah. who are doing it. Uh, I mean, a lot of us first started doing it kind of for funsy, and they kind of become this big thing. But in the beginning, a lot of us were. Um, but now we have people who are doing it because um, quarantine. You know, people see as a new way to work. Um, but I feel like it's right. balanced out for most people. At least for most of the people I talk to on this stream. Um, they are getting about the same. They grow a little bit, uh, but about the same because we have more consumer, more um, people who are watching Twitch, but then we also have more people who are streaming. So it's a uh, kind, right. kind of balance out. Is it the same for you? Um, yeah, like I'll notice a bit of an influx, but it definitely varies day to day. Um, I, I think there are more people on, but I don't know if they're necessarily new people to the platform as much as they are old users that just came back and they already have their favorites you know they like watching so 
Um, even though it seems like there's a lot more people on Twitch, I don't know if it's necessarily funneling into new viewers percentage. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not really sure. It just depends. Some days I'll have like a lot of people and other days it'll be like a normal amount, like pre Corona. So mm -hmm. it just depends. Uh, it's hard, kind of hard to game it. It usually depends on like what activity I'm doing on notice. Like the hype programming gets more viewers, mm -hmm. like like the hype ones get more hyped and then the other programs that people aren't as hyped about just kind of stay like pool streams get a lot um on the weekends sleep streams get quite a bit asmr gets a lot just because people have all different time zones mm -hmm. use it to relax especially when times are stressful so it just depends what i'm doing i've started doing podcasts on my own that's been getting I saw. okay lately yes yeah how's that coming along it's been getting okay um, it's hard to find guests consistently, right? like who, who are <laughs> new, right? Because I'm just not very well networked, I guess. So I don't know a lot of the people who would inter be interested in being on. So for me, it's hard to like, reach, I'm trying to reach out more. But it, I find it hard to think of people to invite who I haven't already invited. Mm -hmm. So I'm always this, meeting new people. I think this is a uh, 11 yeah. week of my show. So it's, oh, wow. yeah, at first I was doing two people per day, uh, per week. And then I was like, eh, I, I get bored because like I only do, I was doing Tuesday and Wednesday. I was still doing it because of convention schedule. So meaning I was saving Monday, uh, like, you know, Thursday to Monday open just in case, you know, convention happens, uh, which it does. Because let's say PAX East, it was Thursday to Monday. So I actually got, I was got there on Wednesday and then got back on either Tuesday or Monday. So it takes, takes out almost a whole week, especially convention were longer and longer mm -hmm. now. Well then, and then that didn't happen, and then we kind of slow down conventions, and then suddenly it's just no convention at all. So I'm like, all right, I guess I'll do, uh, you know, Tuesday to Thursday, uh, and then now it's it's it's, it's okay, not bad. Like I I realize mm -hmm. I'm pretty good at networking. That's a weird thing that I have to realize. I thought it's just like, oh no, I just uh, talk to people, just hang out. That's pretty common, but apparently it's not. But also. Cause I am an extreme extrovert. So I go to convention. Like, that's why I go to convention every other week, mm -hmm. but it kind of helped that like, Oh, I get to talk to people you out of the shell. Yeah. And this is kind of my way of like, Hey, how about I just talk to friends? So then, you know, I don't have to, uh, stuck at home and you know try to you know, slowly yeah. going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I really, it definitely helps to do podcasts. I'm finding, I feel like I actually can socialize, not feel so lonely and isolated. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually want to do a cosplayers podcast. I don't know if you'd be interested in joining that. Yeah, with of course. Maybe some other cosplay girls, if you know any who would be interested. I, I'm sure the combined of us, we know a lot of cosplayers. Yeah, I know Bindo for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I just was going to come to my podcast last week, and then she had a scorpion then issue and like a water pipe burst or for her pool or some filter thing. I don't know. She, but, uh, she's yeah. having a lot of scorpion lot issue. Of, yeah. Yeah, she's having a lot of stuff right now. So maybe when her. It, gets less stressful for her that's why like i don't want to live you know where she is i'm like oh my god like what if i get stabbed by crazy animals it's like a mini australia yeah yeah, yeah she, i think she was saying that like she, they were they were finding scorpions in their shoes when they went to like yeah. put on shoes they'd just be scorpions in there and she was supposing that how they're they can swim in water i'm like oh, nope i'm good i'm good I, i'm just gonna <laughs> nope. stay nope nope noping my way out of there but yeah i've been shooting cosplay for over 10 years so i'm like Wow, I do know cosplayers, um, but it's been a long time. Cosplaying is it's a, it's a weird space. Um, I oh definitely speaking of cosplay. It's a fun space though. It is. I here. Hold on. In a weird turn of events, this is in my house. Also, I'm wearing like home outfits. <laughs> this is in my house right now. <laughs> this is yours. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, from weird turn of events, I end up having this and this is left here. So, like, like oh, great. Yes. I was like, what is this? I'm like, oh, it's when you cosplay that Fortnite swimsuit thing. Yes, yes, we had two of them. Yeah. Yeah, so, I... anyway, so this is just in my room for the whole <laughs> longest time. And I was like, all right, I guess I'll just put it in my room and keep it there. So, yep. voila. <laughs> here you go. <laughs> yeah yeah we did that because uh, i needed the prop but i wouldn't fit in the suitcases so we shipped it and then like the shipment hadn't gotten to the hotel on the day that i was going to wear it so then we went out and we bought another one and so then the one that got there we didn't end up needing after all i have a lot of 
I have a few props here and there because of cosplayers, but I also have a lot of girls' clothing. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. Where does, where does the girl clothing come from? Because we shoot and then we change when we shoot. So like even in my car, I think I cleaned out my car recently, so it's finally gone. But there were times that be like random like chokers, even lingerie and all kind of clothing. <laughs> uh, shoes. I have a pair of like heels, high heels. Are, they're not that great though, but I have a pair of high heels in my trunk. Um, just a lot of random stuff. Like... So, so if I'm dating anyone, they have to understand this is part of the job. It's not like, oh, whose bra is this? Because I would actually like, I don't know, Sarah, <laughs> Jane, I don't know, one of them maybe. <laughs> oh, mate, no, maybe, Ooh. maybe it's Monica. Ooh. Oh yeah. <laughs> so if they don't understand, they'll be like, what the? F like, who are you sleeping with? You know. So. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, like even come. Look at it as wardrobe in case she ever needs stuff yeah and company also go. send me stuff sometimes too they give they send me like lingerie so then you know we can shoot it promote right. it um mm -hmm. what is that one that uh, vera works with um honey burdette i actually like their stuff a lot oh, i've never tried them before honey burdette uh they look classy um price point is not bad they're like asian agent provocateur but not as expensive so oh, okay so not bad um i wonder are they taking a big hit or are they actually doing well now because of coronavirus like all the laundries i don't know hmm. or does it doesn't affect them i don't know guess so i don't know Cause... you would think maybe <sighs> because people are quarantined with each other and nothing to do but on the other hand they're also out of a job so i don't know because i was um watching the news and i think we are going to have a condom shortage mm. yeah really because i think the manufacturer are like either slowing down on making stuff or like people have to quarantine so they kind of slow down i think it's in somewhere in asia i forgot which country is one of the main producer of uh condoms but uh, yeah, and I feel like there's a huge increase need Something for it. Something else to do. Yeah. So <laughs> there's, a, there's a huge need for it right now. And people are like, yep, they're at home having fun and they need condoms. And we're running out low. Not as low as toilet I paper. I do think this is, gonna, this is potentially going to be the next baby boom, if that's the case. Yeah. I mean, we, there's nothing the, to do. People are stuck at home. People are saying calling them, what, quarantine babies? And when they hit their mm -hmm. teen years, they're quarantined. Um, ha -ha. Ha -ha. so that's that's gonna be a thing yeah ha -ha. um that's good what else have you like other than i know you streaming is pretty much a live work kind of thing it's like a both already i i, I know this is like for, yeah you stream almost at least 12 hours a day on average but do, yeah. do you do other stuff for fun no <laughs> i really don't i don't have free time like in a way like, this sounds really, it sounds bad, but I actually don't mind it. Twitch has ruined um, wanting to play video games f in my free time for me because I'm like, oh, I could be streaming this. But then I also know that if I stream it, it's not going to do well. Like, it's just like not a, like a, not a very streamable uh -huh, game yeah, that yeah. people are going to watch. You know, it's like a one player thing. And so I ended up just like never playing most games <laughs> that, I w that I would normally be interested in. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I, I kind of feel like, that anything I could do in my free time, you know, was honestly just a procrastination mm. activity. Like, there's nothing that I'm actually passionate about doing for fun that I like trumps my ultimate passion to help the animals. So I'm like, do I actually want to, you know, play a game by myself off stream? Because really, if I think about it, gaming is not a, like a passion of mine. Like the animals would be gaming is something that I feel like I did growing up because I didn't have the time or I had the time, but not the money to actually like have animals and do what I want. Like I've always dreamed of being on a ranch. Mm -hmm. So I feel like now that I see an opportunity, I'd rather just keep working towards that. And then I can have fun later, you know, mm. that like delayed gratification thing. That's a really delayed gratification. You're always saying like, yeah, I can, yeah, I can delay yeah. it for like a few years. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, there are people out there who, are in a lot of debt and who don't even have their jobs right now because of the quarantine. I'm like, I'm, I'm very blessed. So mm -hmm. I feel like in my job is probably a lot more fun than other people's. Mm -hmm. Like, although, although it's a lot of hours mm -hmm. at the end of the day, 
I get to dance and play games that I that I want to play if I if I wanted to play them. I get to paint pictures, I get to cook at home and I get to lay by the pool and I get to work out and get paid for it. So I mean, at the end of the day, I have it a lot better than so many others out there. So I have no right to be complaining or wanting my own free time or vacations, that kind of thing. Cause I feel like my job is other people's free time. Like it's the equivalent. I you know like that's what they would be doing in their free time. Yeah. Uh, hmm. You're right. I mean, it's, it's hard to combine between work and life. And as you said, you know, it's, it's very lucky that we get to do jobs that's kind of, you know, um, that we enjoy and also we get get to get paid for it. It's difficult to find that mm-hmm. balance. Um, I'm starting to have that problem, however, with cosplay, like, uh, or photography in general, mm-hmm. where I'm like, this is what I love doing when I first started, but it has become more or less a job. So I kind of change it a right. little bit. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sick of it, of course. I felt that way with cosplay too. Um, it was the same feeling I found that it was like, Cosplay is not my ultimate passion. Cosplay is something that I grew up doing because I didn't have the money to do what I actually wanted to do, but so much time to kill, right? And you can make like a budget cosplay and stuff. And then so they I feel like there are so many activities. I get yeah, typecasted. I like, I seen like yeah, for there are so many activities like that, I find. That when you are, you know, when you don't have like your dream within reach, you just find other things to fill the time. And those are your hobbies and interests. You know, I don't know. That's just how I kind of look at it. Because I used to be like so out of money that I couldn't even afford gas to go visit friends. And mm-hmm. so that's why I played lots of video games instead. I was very lonely and I had no money. And, I, and that's why I like started making like armor out of craft foam, you know, costume. Like this was fun. Something that fuels my creativity. Mm-hmm. I can't. There's nothing else that I can afford doing, right? Same, same. You know, I couldn't like. Yeah. So it's it was something that and that's um, what co- shaped who I am. But not my passion, so I'd rather spend my time working towards that instead. That's what made cosplay so awesome because, like, um, when we first started, there was not a lot of materials and a lot of um, tutorials, right. so we had to find yeah. ways to get very, like, creative. Ratchet. Yeah. <laughs> creative. Ratchet, ratchet cosplays. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I've seen a, like, lots of hmm, interesting... This is a poster board left over from a school project. This will work for some armor pattern. It's card fine. box exactly like you had to get creative with like very cheap materials and now it's like so fancy with like 3d printers and oh, and, Kerbla it. and everything and now it's like it actually feels a lot like work now <laughs> you know yeah so that's like kids have a good say. it's like there's pressure to keep up right mm-hmm. with like the, the people who are doing all the crazy, fancy, amazing cosplays. Now there's like so much pressure rather than everyone just cutting stuff out of cardboard and craft foam and making it work. You know, it feels like there's a big gap now between like really good cosplayers and then like the affordable cosplays. There is, yeah. Because they get expensive really fast. Oh, it gets really expensive very fast. Like even Jess with her giant costume. Like those um, using Warbla or whatever, even not 3D printed Warbla, a sheet of those is like what, $200 or something? $200. And then she needs like mm-hmm. three or four sheets that should be with like a giant armor. Um, her like yeah. WoW cosplay yeah. is Pricey. It's expensive, you know? And people always say, oh no, it's just a very cheap, fun hobby. It's like, no, it's really expensive. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. Not when better materials became available. Maybe like back in I don't know pre two thousand ten. Maybe maybe that was when it was like a cheap co- cost like hobby in comparison to drugs or something. Mm-hmm. You know. And, and you, <laughs> but now it's definitely expensive. And it's annoying because <laughs> like uh, you know I, I talk to cosplayer a lot about this all the time. Is that the more money you spend on costume, the more armor, more stuff the less people care usually. I mean, there's some care, but like no. when it comes to like people like, for example, especially supporting to like, hey, you know, I love to do this for passion. You know, people always say, oh, how about you make some real cosplay? And then sure, right. you make a giant armor cosplay that's real, you know? Yeah. And then like, cool. And that's it. Like, enga- nope. even yep. engagement is low. And then people is definitely not paying for it. They're not supporting you for it. And that's like, Come on. Right. Like I like yeah. I support everyone who like wants to make cool cosplays and do armor like like I'm I'm like you go. You do what you want to do. Mm. But yeah, it is discouraging, I'm sure, to all the like I know a lot of people make 
really sick armor cosplays. And they put so much hour and so much hard work into it. And so, so much time and money and literally blood, sweat and tears into mm-hmm. it. And they look amazing. And then they get like a fraction of the likes they get if they just wore like a Misty cosplay. Yep. <laughs> like shorts and, sh- shorts and a tank from Walmart and, and you know, side ponytail wig. I mean, it, it's sad. It's not fair, but. Except for photos. Sadly, that's just how it works. Selfies you know? do better than your photo shoot yeah. photos. Oh, yes, absolutely. And so that's why I'm saying like the days for cosplay photographers are kind of over already. But, you know, it, it is what it is. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, we can't. It sucks. Uh, it, it actually does suck. But we can't argue with the way the world is. I mean, here's the thing. There's no point. I, I always say this. Like, we are mostly supply to demand. Um, there's only few of us that can change demand. Uh, you you know, you're, you're the very few that can kind of do that. But most people are mostly supplying to a demand. So we will do mostly what people want to support. Um, if they want to make, if people want a bikini cosplay, sure. But if they want a cart box cosplay or someone just, you know, dress up in cart box and they're willing to support that, sure. Then everyone will start doing it. So it's kind of um, up to the people, uh, especially in America. So, yeah. <sighs> it's, it's it's difficult. <laughs> I feel bad for the way that social media works sometimes. It's just, I don't think that there's much we can do about it. At the end of the day, sex sells, you know? Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, um, h- how difficult it is to mod your channel? Because you have, like, average, like, few thousand viewers. But then there's a lot of, you know, not so nice comments. <laughs> And they kind of get. I don't know mods how difficult is it. They just say, "Oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy." How many mods um, do you have? I think I have around like forty mods oh. right now. Yeah. Do you have so, to like? Do you have to meet with them to let them know like what is the uh, your channel kind of uh, you know not standard but like what is your kind of culture that you have on your channel versus. Other people, I don't know. Yeah, I I let them know. And like, we have like a Discord group for it. Um, Mods say it's pretty difficult sometimes. I get some interesting messages. That's what they say. (laughs) Um, Yeah, a lot of crazy people. uh, A lot of perverts. And a lot of just sad little people. I saw saw you were doing a a stream a few days ago on, um, what's it? unbanning people like going through do they email you or something oh yes or yes they'll if they've been banned there's like a form they can fill out and they'll submit it um to me for the review on stream and decide if i should unban them or not with chat i let chat help me and uh, they're like my jury that's... and we decide the fate of them <laughs> that's fun um because i get uh, of course not as so much as you do but i get lots of um unsolicited um, message as well on my instagram and twitter and stuff Oh yeah, I get, I get, I get hit. I know, you know, it's good confident boost. Sometimes they tell me, you know, I look very pretty. They love my blonde hair and blue eyes and my sexy breast. That's what they always tell they me. Think you're the girl they the always picture? think I am like the girls. I don't know how. Like my Martin Wong. It's Martin yes, Wong. Clearly. It's my face, and it's obviously it's a photographer. And they're all different people. It's so sometimes not just girls or guys. Uh, there's different ethnicity, yeah. <laughs> different hair color. But you know what? Yeah. I, got, I got called Princess the other day. So that was pretty nice. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I was like, moving up in the world. Gorgeous, beautiful, glamour, um, glamorous uh, princess. I think that's what they said. Yeah. So some guys, I, I mean, I even talk to them sometimes. Uh, so, so on Facebook Messenger, I do answer everyone uh, on my page. Uh, that was right. my old policy. I kind of kept it. Everyone, do you ever get messages from girls? Like, do they ever send like, in, like instead of dick pics, do they send like clit pics? No, to you? Do you ever get girls? I am missing out. I feel like that is. What? I didn't know that was a an option, so I did not get that. But Should... I've got lots of dick pics. No. Oh. Yeah, like uh, th- this is one. Str- <laughs> this is one strange thing, though. Uh, I'm not sure it's the same for you, but maybe it's a culture thing. I have a lot of Middle Eastern guy hit on me, but they send me porn. Oh, yes. But they send me. Do they send pictures of roses? They send roses. That's what yes. I they send say. roses. Yes. They send. Here. But they also you, send me. Rose with a pretty lady. They send me porn, which yeah. is really strange. Why? And it's not like their dick or anything. It's just they'll send me like lesbian porn. They'll send me 
no heterosexual <laughs> porn, uh, sometimes gay porn, and I I don't get it. It's like, first of all, do you think I'm the girl or the guy? Are you? Is this an offering or is this a suggestions? Now I'm curious. Mods, do people do do viewers send you that kind of stuff? Do viewers send you like dick pics and porn? saying passes along to Amaranth or anything? I hope not. I won't be surprised. A lot of my older mods run like the the day-to-day -day elements too of my stream. And so I feel like if anyone's targeted, they would be. Like people always give me stuff to pass along to Jess. And I'm like- Not really? Okay, that's good. I'm like, okay. But yeah, no, they, they usually tell me messages to, to Jess. But no, but I get messages from like guys sending me porn. And then this one guy, you know, he said he want to have sex with me. I'm like, okay. I'll entertain you. Um, <laughs> how? Like, I really want to know how, because he's obviously not from this country, you know, from his pa Facebook and everything. Um, so I just want to know how does it work logistically? Like, are you flying me out or are you flying over here? And then he kind of didn't talk about it. He just keeps sending me porn. I'm like, no, 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 go back to the sex. I want the sex. Tell me, how does that work logistically? <laughs> and they won't tell me. <laughs> So, Whoa. so yeah, so, so you haven't gotten offers in your email yet. Oh, like, I have. One night or however much money. So I brought this up before too. Uh, it's actually on my profile as well, but, um, I, one of the best offer I have ever gotten is that $7,000 for a porn scene. I know that could be kind of low, but okay. But however, it's a really weird question. I, I screenshot it, but it's very confusing because they were saying that they're willing to offer me, um, I think the question was, will you willing to f shoot a scene for a private Pornhub channel for $7,000? So at first I'm like, oh, they think I'm a girl. They want me to, you know, be a porn star and then in their film. But then I'm like, maybe they do know I'm a photographer and they wanted me to shoot it, you know, because they said, do, are you willing to shoot it? So I'm like, okay. They might think I'm a, I'm a photographer. Okay, not too bad. But then the more I think about it and pe my friends are commenting, it could be the other way too. It could be like, do they mean like I, they think I am the guy and I have to pay them $7,000 to be in a porn scene. So I, I don't know what does the $7,000 means. Like, am I paying them or are they paying me? Um, I don't know. So that's just, so far that is the best offer I have gotten. So that's my that's asking price. If I... 7k starting and then yeah we'll go from there yeah okay i don't know i'm sure people people <laughs> have told you crazy amounts before uh you should keep track of like what is the highest offer you have gotten just as an offer <laughs> but then people just... i don't know i actually don't remember what my highest was i know somebody i know at least one person offered 30k i can't remember what, what i got i i talked about another one a few weeks ago in my email uh -huh. and he offered more i don't remember how much though what, i can't quite remember what about feet photos feet photos sometimes people request them it's strange because um, like people would take my photos of like all the cosplayer and models i shot with and they'll just crop out everything else and post those pictures of just their feet just the feet yeah and they ask me do i have more I, like just crop the other photos and they i don't know it's strange it's it's a. Uh, it's like I don't know. Like if I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't can't shape. You know, you can like whatever you like. It's just strange how they will just crop out the rest of the photo and use that as what's what's that one website? Uh, Wiki um, Feet or something. Which one? Which oh, one? I've never heard of this. Yeah, so I'm sure you. No, I'm curious. Oh, I'm sure you're on it too. Like eighty. Kinzer really wants to know. She's my she's my foot fetish mod. So yeah, I'm like Kinzer. Eighty percent. Kinzer wants to know. Eighty percent of my cosplayer. Our models have definitely been on it and yeah they crop out my photos for it which is like okay but there's a full set of photos available but all right um i had to i actually have to download my photos a lot from websites they get leaked oh yeah 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 they, yeah the leaks do you do you submit the the, the takedown notices yeah, yeah sometimes i have to and i was talking to uh, <clears throat> mac 20 last week about this it's, it's strange because you know I'm pirating my own photos to see if there are leak sets of photos. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you get that a lot too? I don't know where they go to, but there's many sites that do that. Um. I don't have any kind of photos to leak. What do you mean? Mm. Um. 
<laughs> Go follow me on my social media, guys. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, guys. Um, no, I it's it's a weird time um, with all the different websites, different link. Um, I know a lot of us going from. Am I allowed to say Patreon stuff? I'm allowed to say it. I just can't link it. I don't know. I, I don't know enough about Twitch rules to be like what is allowed to promote and what's not allowed to promote. Uh, um, it depends what's on it. I think if it's if it has adult content, you can't like promote your Patreon. If it is, you know, yes. not not something you would be able to wear on stream. So I think mm -hmm. you. I know you're not allowed to put in a description. I think I don't know. But are you allowed to say it on stream? Or is no, that not if your if your landing page indicates it at all. No, you're not technically allowed to say it on stream or write it. Oh, promote it at all. If, but if your landing page, like, say they went to your landing page for it, and it was it was it was like sponsor friendly, like safe, like uh huh, it was safe uh -huh. for work, safe for Twitch. Okay, if nothing okay. indicating the words or images on your landing page of Patreon about it. It would be different. You would be. I see what you did there. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, that's smart, actually. Um, hmm. Well, I don't have that problem myself. I'm just gonna pass it along to our friends. Uh, we don't. I. My 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 Patreon is all this and photos that I take, and which is mostly PG thirteen. Mostly, I have a separate account Instagram for the not so PG thirteen ones. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. It's That's not true. My social media is safe for work. Make sure to follow my personal Twitter and my fitness account on Instagram. Speaking of my which, personal Twitter is wild, Kate. It's very safe. Is it actually yours? Mm hmm. Because I, I don't know. Okay. So earlier I tried to tag you in a post, right? Because I was on Twitter. I was like, oh, yeah, let me uh, post, you know, today we're, we're streaming tonight. Um, and I just type in your name. Dude, there's so many fake accounts. <laughs> Oh yeah, is well, I have a lot of side ones too, so it just depends. Is your um, name with a number or your name spelled with the letter switch? Um, no. And there's so many different ones. Like I can just type in uh, A M O U R um, A N, and then there's already a bunch of them, and then they all using the same profile photos as yours. Yeah, no. And I don't um, know which one is like. I was always worried. It's like, am I gonna take the wrong one or like? On Instagram or Twitter? Twitter. Instagram, you verify, yeah, so that's easier. The only ones on Twitter are Amaranth and Wildcate. Everything else is probably fake. Okay. Oh, most likely. Yeah. Yeah. You should get yourself a uh, Twitter verify. I would love to. I'm working on it. I'm trying to be. I I'm working with new management soon. So we're trying to like get the contracts in order and stuff and get the ball rolling. It's been hard with the corona, but... Supposedly they can get me Twitter verified. Supposedly, did, so we'll see. Did you did you submit? Did they take out the form? Like this is not available to. Yeah, I did. They never. I mean, I could try again. Maybe at the time they just weren't looking at it. I don't know. It was a long time ago when I tried. Okay. It was after I was verified on Instagram already. I tried it on Twitter and they didn't respond to me. I feel like that's how I did it because I got. Well, I also work in Silicon Valley, so it's a little bit easier at that time. Um, right. But now is but now it's a bit difficult. But yeah, it's, mm -hmm. once you have Instagram verify and the other ones as well, and then you have a huge following. Well, isn't your Twitter name Martin Wong? Uh, my Twitter no, my everything I have is Martin Wong photo on everything. Uh, well, your name's still on it. Though. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that's what they were. I think at the time that's what oh, they said that the their reason was for not verifying me is because it doesn't have a real name on it, so that they can't verify that it's like actually Caitlin, you know. They can make it that was a dumb excuse, even though I sent screenshots to try and get it verified of like my emails with my name mm -hmm. and the settings and stuff. Mm -hmm. and they, they didn't care. So it, it could be a brand like, I don't know. They, I, it's weird because is right now a lot of personality are also their own brand. So it's big enough to be like, well, there's more people following Jeffree Star than most companies. So I don't know why they would be like, right. Yeah. And I don't think that would be. It might be discriminating though because of um, the nature of content. Mm. Wait, no, but lots of you know, a lot of because I know they shadow ban based on the nature of content as well. It's... So it could have something to do with that. Yeah, um, maybe work with your management. They used to, like I think they used to verify my genre of pages, but not anymore. Oh, because like, I have I a lot of. 
creators in that space. When, it depends when you mm. submitted the form, I think. Mm. There's a cutoff at some point. And also, I think with uh, politics, they kind of change rules often. Uh, mm -hmm. it, yes. It was difficult when I was working in Silicon Valley. Uh, one of the years was the um, presidential elections. So it was really tricky. That's like once wherever presidential elections happens, there's a lot going on. And I we have to decide like what is allowed, what is not allowed, how to ban, not to ban. And this is it's a mess. Um, it's, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I I don't know. I, speaking of politics, I know this is really random. It's a chat. Um, what do you there's a lot of streams that talk about politics. I just try not to because people tend to just start arguing in a chat. And I feel like politics is one of those things where it's everyone's going to believe what they already believe. And you're not, you're like 99% of the time, you're not going to be able to convince someone otherwise to believe your way if they don't already believe your way. Oh, like you're just yes. <laughs> arguing, you're just, just pissing into the wind. Especially Twitter. To, yeah, on, yeah, on Twitter. Like I would try to explain. It's so hard to explain to people because they don't want, they don't want to discuss. They want you to be wrong. Not only they want you to be right, they want you to be wrong. Mm -hmm. oh. Chat's asking when did it change? Because there were um, adult film stars verified. I think it was 2018. They changed it on Twitter. I have some adult. I didn't get, uh, yeah, I wasn't verified at first, and I did it after I was verified on Instagram, hoping that would help me get verified on Twitter. And at that point, it was too late. Mm. Yeah, I have a bunch of adult friends who are verified on Twitter as well. Um, mm -hmm. But again, policy change all the time, so it really mm -hmm. depends on the person. Same for uh, Twitch partnership. It used to be a lot yeah. easier, and then. Now it's because no, actually, it's easier than it used to be. Is it? It's much easier than it used to be. I mm -hmm. thought they're tightening it because they don't want too many partner. I don't know. Uh, from from when I started streaming, I was lucky because I got into the creative program. Mm. But um, originally, they wouldn't allow you to be a partner unless you had five hundred concurrent uh, viewers in a gaming category. Five hundred. Yes, five hundred was the requirement. I got lucky because I partnered in a creative, so we only needed like anywhere from like sixty to one hundred viewers concurrent because it's such a new category. Ashley, that's that's the woman that talked to us. But yes, um, from Twitch. No, but yeah, uh, back. But you know, they try creative really hard. Like even I tried it. I stream. You know, I, I do it now, but I do it through just chatting. But I will do editing photos sometimes. But people don't mm -hmm. really watch creative. <laughs> As much. No, they don't. In comparison, so that's that. They even took out yeah. creative completely. This making too different. I think I honestly think it's because they don't push it enough on Twitch. Like they they shot it down before they really let it grow, you know. And then they split it up into so many different categories. It used to be one creative mm -hmm. category in general, and now it's like every creative genre has its own category. It's kind of really sp split. Yeah. Like, uh. I it made it more difficult. I wish cosplay is, is got or even painting. I mean, the biggest right now is, is still the biggest. Bob Ross. Bob Ross, exactly. And like, oh wow, you like no matter how good you stream, you're still gonna get destroyed by Bob Ross when it comes to viewership in the creative department. Right. Uh, yeah. So I guess um, it was just like with just, just chatting, they kind of did that to themselves. Yeah, that's why I I paint in just chatting too. I just like talk to chat while I'm painting, and you know, because my my focus isn't the art itself. I'm just talking while I'm I'm just painting while I'm talking. I guess. Is that you know? the same thing when you're doing pool stream, like hanging yeah. around the pool and just chat? Because well, just chatting has become like the new IRL, right? Because they had IRL and they decided for some some. Is IRL not a thing well, anymore? Some stupid person at Twitch decided. <laughs> So like, let's make it so that it's easier for people to find what they want to watch. And yet, still, it's not, it's actually harder now, you know? They decided to take IRL and divide it into many different categories. <laughs> I'm like, and now just chatting is the new IRL, basically, because no one sees the other categories. Like, they're not recommended to people. No. They're not promoted at the front of Twitch. So it's like, who would want to stream in, like, a category that no one's seeing? So is IRL <laughs> technically a category? Or not anymore. They now IRL is a tag, and oh, it, okay, it's right, a tag right. that falls under the just chatting category, like by default, like along with English. If you're an yep. English streamer, so it's like it's basically IRL. Just chatting is now IRL. 
Yeah, they they accomplish nothing basically, except confuse people for a while. I mean, <laughs> I guess they're doing the best they can. Like compared to the other platform, I still think Twitch is still ahead. I think. I think it is ahead of the live streaming platforms. Yes, there are with things I wish they could adapt from other other sites like YouTube, for instance. Like with the hashtags, I wish they would bring those back. Kind of, um, you know, mm. the search, but and like, there's no discovery really on Twitch besides like a, a recommended thing, which is limited. I feel like YouTube's recommended list is a lot bigger, mm. and more. You know, would you? Would you jump to a different platform if they offer you a bag of money? That's what most of them did, like Facebook or YouTube, even I don't Microsoft know Mixers. because, like, I just feel like the jump wouldn't may not be very successful. I'm really not sure at this point. I don't know. I it depends what platform, I guess. Yeah, I haven't looked at love, like, but I think Ninja is still not doing that great on Mixer. Yeah, and I just feel like people are inherently um lazy like no offense guys but i'm that way too yeah. like i don't want to learn a new app new platform and like yeah. how many of the creators that i currently follow are on this other app like it's just a thing you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah i feel like it's yeah. just a barrier of entry and that's the problem with people always, always complain about facebook twitter or instagram they're like oh someone should make a new platform and like trust me there's always company making new social media platforms just nobody using it yeah I th feel like if YouTube wanted to win at live streaming, they probably could, but they're busy owning the pre-made video aspect, you know? They... I feel like they... I feel like YouTube's discovery for live streaming is even worse. Unless you're like... The only time I've ever seen, like, a live stream have traction on YouTube is when Game of Thrones theories were <laughs> hot. Like, when the shows... Because the, they would be, like, some guy speculating what's going to happen tonight during Game of Thrones. It would have, like, 10k live stream viewers because people are, like, all hyped, you know? It's like a like a worldwide phenomenon mm -hmm. type of exception. I feel like otherwise, um, it's really difficult to get people to find you for live streaming on YouTube because everyone uses YouTube for not for that at the moment. Don't you still make a lot of YouTube uh, content? Like a lot. I do. Is it mostly relative? Not not as much as Twitch, but I try to post a video a week at all, on all my um, <laughs> different channels. I have three different channels, so three different videos per week that I try to keep up with along with streaming and then the photo shoots and my other um, platforms and <laughs> it's it's a lot it, it gets to be overwhelming but you so for YouTube you have the vlog one you have the ASMR one and then what's the last one gaming highlights I just added highlights. recently so basically um I don't have to do too much on that mm. I have helpers who curate the content for me from it um which is like it's inconsistent a bit, a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I have to, I I have to hire an editor for mine. Yeah. Um, tell me about ASMR though. How did you get into it? Hmm. ASMR is an interesting one. I actually started it as a joke because <laughs> I kind of knew what ASMR was already. Because like, um, I guess my dad wasn't into so much the like the human ASMR, but like the nature sounds, you know, that you sleep to, so and like that's kind of like noise? similar. White yeah, white noise tracks and such. Uh huh. And when uh, one day when I was looking for like sleep uh, sounds on YouTube, I saw ASMR, and I was like, "This is interesting." I mean, it just has the same effect, relaxes you, helps you sleep. Um, and then I started trying it on my stream as a joke, mm -hmm. and my chat ended up actually liking it and wanted me to take it seriously. <laughs> I think the first time I did it was um, probably 2017. I think I was in a Daenerys cosplay. And I was like whispering into a microphone, like Dothraki stuff with like paint brushes. <laughs> like I was just like joking around, like a one off stream. And then uh, my viewers were spiking hard, and chat was like, You should actually do this. It's really relaxing. I'm like, Okay. And so I started ordering like the 3DO microphone, which is like the binaural one with the ears on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I just kept going from there and you... saw, saw myself and experimented over time. And now it's a staple program. So, do you yourself get uh, the tinkle? I do sometimes. It depends on the sound. Um, sometimes I can give it to myself. Usually, it's from like when I'm listening to a video, not like as I'm doing it. Um, but yeah, I, I I do get them. It's just not as often as I used to when it was when I didn't do it every day. 
but it still relaxes me. It still puts me to sleep. And that's all I care about. I don't really care about the tingle. In fact, it's not like mm. the tingle isn't even like my favorite aspect of ASMR. I find that more like distracting from sleeping than anything. <laughs> <laughs> like I just like I just want to go to sleep. Put me to sleep because I have ADD, so my mind just racing. If I if I don't have white noise to distract me, mm-hmm. I just stay up thinking too much. I, my mind's like a million directions. If I oversleep, I dream. But if not, I can sleep almost anywhere. I kind of had to train myself for that, um, especially on the plane. Oh, I can sleep. In- it's just if it's absolute mm. silence uh, like i can sleep anywhere because the ambient noise mm. will put me to sleep like a car moving car plane if i'm sitting anywhere in a public area like waiting for my plane in a chair like there's layovers and stuff um i can fall asleep instantly but if it's absolute silence like in my room where there's nothing going on it just keeps my mind awake so silence is so loud for some reason in my mind what about when you do s- sleep stream like do you I play a rain track ah. on my computer, and I also uh, have the air conditioning on, which is like loud in this room. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I had yeah. a ASMR YouTuber on the show a few weeks ago. Um, but yeah, it's crazy how big it have gotten. It was a really small thing, and then suddenly it blew up, and then everyone loves it. Well, you don't love it or you hate it. There's like no in between. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get really different crowd when you're doing ASMR versus like your auto stream? Oh yeah, it's way less toxic. Oh, that's <laughs> so. Yeah. So do you announce? Because people are in like a happy mode, like oh, good, I get to relax. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's a lot less trollish in ASMR. Occasionally, you get some perverts who are like, "Could you like make blowjob sounds in the microphone?" And you're like, "No, if that relaxes you, you're gonna have a very boring life." That's, I'm gonna be honest. That's... If mouth sounds and blowjob <laughs> sounds put you to sleep. For, be prepared to be forever alone because no one's gonna want to have fun with that. That's not fun. Like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh my god. Be prepared to just forever alone your life. That's um yeah. <laughs> Every time you get a blowjob, that like, well time to take a nap. <laughs> like oh. Uh. It's like really. You're missing the point of this. <laughs> Uh, so do you have to announce when you're doing ASMR ahead of time or like because like or do you like stream re- irregularly like whenever you want to stream this you just go into it or you just like I don't know do you have a schedule uh, typically it's at nighttime I used to do it more like randomly I would do it early and stuff but since I started trying to like get like a actual streaming schedule consistently of programs I don't really have time for it during the day anymore because if I'm not doing a photo shoot that day, then it's like it's a nice day for the pool day or it's mm-hmm. like I'm cooking that day or I'm doing gym stuff that day. And there's just like no time for ASMR during my day slots. Mm-hmm. So I'm doing other stuff. Um, so now it's just usually at night. It's like you can start as early as like 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. But usually mm-hmm. it's around like 8 or 9. And then just goes into the night. Uh, I have another question. So like midnight or later. And let me know if you don't want to talk about it. But um I talked to a few other streamers about this too. Stalker issue. <clears throat> do you have that problem? Or do you, are, you, oh, yeah. are you worried? Well, I'm not really worried because one, I got a attack dog. I like, you know, th- do you know what a Caucasian shepherd is? Mm, no. They are used in Russia as prison guard dogs. Okay, okay. okay. And also used to run off bears and wolves. So I got one of those recently. And I'm also in Texas, so guns are yes. illegal. So I'm not really scared about stalkers. Uh huh. Um, they're more of just a nuisance than an actual threat. I have had a situation before where a guy who's crazy, like they 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 are actually crazy because these types of people who end up stalking you. Mm -hmm. They become so obsessed with you and think that when you're streaming, you're talking to them in like a one-on-one conversation. Mm. They don't realize it's a stream. They think it's like a Skype call with a girlfriend or something. And you like don't even know who they are. Mm. And he went from, I'm glad I found you on Twitch. I love watching your stream. To I'm glad you're my friend. To I'm glad you're my best friend. To I'm glad you're my girlfriend. To I'm glad we're engaged. To I'm in Houston. When is your friend coming to pick me up? That's okay. I'll just find a hotel in your area because I don't respond to because he's a stranger. I don't know who this guy is. He's crazy. Jesus Christ. Because I had a P.O. box open. Uh-huh. And so we had the zip code uh-huh. of the P.O. box. And he just went and he found a hotel in that area. Wow. And like wow. kept messaging me. With me not responding at all, wanting me to come and and meet him and be like, we're, we're going to be engaged. You're acting really 
really immature right now. And then he was blaming it on my brother. The fact that I wasn't responding. He was like, it's your brother. He's keeping you from me. They're like, <laughs> like Jeez. this guy was insane. And so because he was in my area, presumably for like a, a week or so, I had to stay at home because it was known to my stream that I go to the gym. How many gyms are there in that area? You know, mm -hmm. and I, I also go to the post office to pick up my PO box. So I couldn't go to the post office. Um, the, the social media knows what my dogs look like, mm -hmm. so I couldn't have my dogs outside. My dogs and I were on in like in the house on house arrest, basically. Mm -hmm. I couldn't go to the store because how many grocery stores are there in the area? Yep. You know, it's like yeah. it's like a process of elimination. I don't want to take the risk, so I was like on house arrest until um. I saw on his social media that he was back in his own country. Oh my God. Like he flew oh, from Canada. He's never from this country. No, he's not. He's from Canada. Oh, shit, man. Yeah, I know. I, we, I have friends that have the same similar situation, you know, uh, where they, you know, pretend to um, be postal delivery and to find out where you live. They will like knock on each door oh. to find out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's scary. And also, like, it, again, it's, an, it's annoying because like, you are now being quarantined without doing anything other than mm -hmm. like oh i guess i'm stuck in my house for like at least a week until i can stalk him back to like please leave please are you home are you back in a different country so i can go yeah. out and do my normal life yeah like that's why it's very annoying most of us cannot take yeah. photos like in front of our house anymore um no just, ugh, i don't know i yeah i don't know i would want that life <laughs> but i am living that life yeah. too so Kind of yeah, I've come to realize the more I do this, and it's like, I, I'm not going to say that I wish I hadn't done it because it's provided me with so much opportunity to do what I actually want to do eventually, you know? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I will say, though, that as I get more involved in social media, the more I'm realizing that it's not like the dream is not to be famous. The dream is not to have people know your name and want to cause you harm. The dream is to be a nobody who can get that attention fill when you want to. Mm -hmm. Like you can go dress up, go out, people pay attention to you, people admire, people stare at you, people cat call you. You get that endorphins and like the confidence boost and you go home and no one knows who you are mm -hmm. and they don't bother you. Like that would be like, the, that's the best the, balance I feel. The problem is that they, they're, they're chained, they're linked together. You can't just like, oh yeah, I would love. You know, social media they are, but to be like a normal person. Yeah. That's like who isn't on social media. That would be like the best balance is to have your shit together have a successful career to do what you want, but have no one know who you are. That's like the, the best, I feel. That is why a lot of um, celebrities, they like to travel abroad, you know, to other countries, because, you know, if some places that, you know, don't really follow American um, celebrities, then they're like, oh, I have right. no idea who you are. You're just here for vacation. Great, you know, uh, mm -hmm. or even some private islands or whatever. So because then they can act like a normal human being, you know, they could just right. like, oh, yeah, I will do go to a restaurant, eat without someone bothering me or like giving you that look. Actually, do you get that? Have you ever went outside and made people give you that look? It's like, I think I know her. I think. Yes. And then... <laughs> yes. It's usually it, it, every time so far in Houston, at least. I've gotten it from random places in California, but in Houston, it's always been a hot topic. Like that's just the type of people who work at Hot Topic oh. who would know <laughs> the cosplayers because it's like a like a nerd store, I guess. Now it's not it now, yeah. like it used to be. Now it's like pop culture and nerd stuff. It's really different, yeah. So it's always hot topics at different malls. <laughs> They're like, "Are you Amaranth? I follow you on Instagram." Do you Are ever you approach them right first? It's like. Hi, yes. And do you want a picture? <laughs> no, they always ask me because I'm just like checking out my stuff, you know, because I like I'll shop. I like shopping there. And mm -hmm. so it's like I'll buy my stuff and at the counter they're like, are you Amaranth? I'm like, usually I'm streaming. So I'm like, yes, this is a content opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm either vlogging or streaming typically if I'm at the mall. So that's the same thing yeah, I say to you now. Stuff. Like everything I do now, it's like, yes, I can do this or it can be doing this but also content right that's why i feel guilty now if i try to play a game like animal crossing 
like off stream, I had to stop playing it because I had I literally don't have free time. And so at like 3 a.m. I was trying to play Animal Crossing when I have to wake up again three hours. I'm like, this is bad. I need to stop. So <laughs> so I'm like, it makes me feel guilty though to try and play games off stream because it's like I could be streaming this right now and contributing towards my goal. And but then I'm like, <laughs> I know that on stream it's I'm not a I'm not entertaining when I play those types of games. I'm just the kind of person that gets sucked into the game mm -hmm. and I can't multitask that very well. I can't like entertain a stream and have fun at my game like oh it's, definitely not it's... yeah there were i'm not good at that. there were times that i would be streaming playing a video game like league of legends or something and then i would like guys i'm tired you know i'm gonna take a break i'm gonna stop streaming for the day thank you for watching da -da 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 -da. and then i end the stream so then i can play the game to enjoy playing the game not <laughs> yeah it's different you know because i i care more about maybe it's just like you too right i care more about the stream when i'm streaming so i want to make sure they're entertained mm -hmm. they're not just like not ignoring them is like this guy's just not even talking and just playing his game. So I'm making sure I'm entertaining. So it's very different for me to very focus on the game to be very good at it. Right. So have you thought about having? I I know some people they have side accounts. Like some of the big streamer guys have side accounts mm -hmm. to where like that is their free time monetization. So they have like their main account that gets sponsors and stuff. They entertain mm -hmm. that's what they're known mm -hmm. for. And they have a side account where they don't even have a camera on. They don't talk to chat at all. And they just literally stream their gameplay and like enjoy their game in their own mind, you know, without just stressing chat. And sometimes people can watch and give ad money and donate. But and stuff, you knowing know? us, we'd be like, <laughs> yes, we can do that. Or we can stream it. <laughs> right, it could right. Be that's the main account. Am, like, right? I could be saying, like, thanks I for the sub. I could do that. Or I could stream my main account and get more profit off of it if I'm going to bother playing it at all. Because yeah. at the end of the day, it comes down to that, again, that gaming is not my passion. You mm -hmm. know? Like, it's something I enjoy. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's just a time killer for when I don't have Same. my passion that I can use. It so it's like... <laughs> I, I wasn't... It's strange because... Uh, it's great and strange because I'm a guy. Uh, I wasn't really like raised as a nerd like you know i'm from hong kong um i i watch and <laughs> i watch anime uh but that i didn't go out my way to watch anime because back in the days um uh, in america like when you have to watch anime you have to join the anime club in high school or something and they will buy VH vhs tape and then just all watch it together or something and then later tsunami but right. before that you got nothing you just kind of hopefully you, you you'll find it somewhere there's no the internet wasn't really big, so you can't really like find manga as well. Uh, for me, it wasn't the case. Dragon Ball Z is a normal TV on the on my yeah yeah when I was like seven like or something. SWB. Yeah, exactly. Same yeah. as like Sesame Street, because <laughs> you know mm -hmm. violence is not a problem there too. So it's like okay, cool, just normal daytime TV for me. Uh, after that's what it was for me. My family didn't have cable or anything, so it was just like the local programming. Mm -hmm. and that's how I grew up. So PBS Kids and Kids WB. Yeah, and I grew up on. And uh, speaking of which, um, before I go back to that story, is that um, that's how I explain streaming to older generation people who don't understand what streaming is. Because they'll be like, oh, why do you, why are you streaming? And like, how are you getting paid for it? Like, why are people giving you money? Why are they donating? Why are they subbing? And so my explanation to them is like, it's like PBS for viewers like you. And, you know, sometimes they do like, hey, you know, we're doing a donation run or charity run or no, not charity, but donation run where it's like, hey, we'll send you a bag or something, but donate to PBS so it can make better programming. So that's kind of how streaming is, you know, like people pay you because they're entertained by watching you that program that they like. Um, right. That's how I see it. But yeah, so I wasn't mm -hmm. really grew up as a nerd, but no one questioned me because I'm an Asian guy. <laughs> Like, I go to PAX See, all the time. I, my experience was way different then. <laughs> I had everyone, like, shunning me because, like, it wasn't the stereotypical thing for a girl to like Pokemon or Power Rangers or, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! or Digimon. Uh -huh. I was, like, the outcast because the girls were, like, that's weird. Like, they they only like Sailor Moon. And I was a big tomboy growing up because I'm the youngest and I only have brothers, no sisters. Hmm. And so I was like, I was always rejecting girly stuff so that I, my brother would accept me. <laughs> and so I'm like, Sailor Moon? That's girl. That's too girly for me. I was like, I'm much cooler than that. Dragging along my brother trying to play sports and like didn't like dresses, was always in shorts. Um, so I rejected anything that was like too girly just for, by the nature of it because I, if I didn't, then I would have no one to play with because mm -hmm. I only had brothers. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I did not like that at all. And they hated the fact that I only liked the tomboy type stuff. 
So I didn't fit in with the girls, but because I had cooties, I also didn't fit in with the boys. So I had a very lonely childhood. And that's, I think that's when I truly discovered my love for animals. Because mm. the girls on the street wouldn't play with me. The guys thought I had cooties. And so the dogs, though, would come into my yard and just, like, pet me, neighborhood dogs. So I'm like, you're my best and only friend. <laughs> I love you so much. You know, I grew up on, like, the Animal Disney movies and Homeward Bound and Air Bud. Oh. All those 90s animal movies. And, and that's just how that started. I mean, it's like most of us. Lonely then. nerd with only animals for friends. I wasn't as much of a nerd, but I was definitely also a lonely outcast in high school i got some friends but there's also not as cool being an asian immigrant uh but yeah like i, I was saying to like at, at conventions is i forgot who i was talking to but we were saying that some people try to pull like oh i was um i was bully back in uh school you know and then that's why i go to conventions and they're trying to play the the card that like oh i got bully and like Please, everyone. We got all bullied. got bullied. Yeah, if you go to a yeah. convention, we all got bullied everyone at one point. Got bullied. <laughs> you can't play. You that don't card. have to be a little bitch about it. Yeah, <laughs> that should not be what defines you. Like we, oh, that's why we're here. Why do you think we're all here? So isn't that ironic that we all got bullied, and then on, at conventions, the culture of that, and like on Twitch especially, now the nerds are bullying people for not being nerdy enough in their eyes. You know, like I think they never had girls. that chance. Like, you're not a real gamer. You're a fake gamer girl. You don't actually like this because you're a girl. It's like. That's the thing. Like they, it's so <laughs> the ironic. Had become the bullies. Yeah, because they never had the chance, and they're like, no, I can power trip and I can bully other people. Makes them feel good. Mm -hmm. Which is like, no, you know how bad it was. Like why? Mm -hmm. Right. I'm sure you get that a lot. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Lots of bullies out there now who were like, I know you were a bullied loser in school too. That your friend, that other people called you. You know, mm -hmm. that's how you're labeled as. We all were labeled the same thing. If you like this kind of stuff, you were not because cool. that's the time we grew up in. The Zoomers maybe not. I mean, oh, now no. they're like it's so cool. cool now. Like uh, I was talking to a uh, younger generation of nerds and cosplayer to see, you know, how is it like now in school? Like, do you guys get bullied or like what is it like to be popular? Uh, the popular kids now are the one that who are on TikTok. So oh, yeah. the, it's, it's, I mean, the jock is still popular, but the one that who are also very popular now are the kids who are popular on the internet. So I didn't right, have that growing media. up. Yeah, social media. Mm -hmm. So it's very strange. So I'm not sure is it better or worse. Like, do people get get picked on differently? Like, I'm sure if you're weird, like people will still isolate you, but having a new way of being cool and popular it might change the dynamic a lot i don't know mm -hmm. um so yeah it's, it's cool though i feel like for some people they can finally be cool without liking normal stuff that's good for them but i don't know who are the the outcasts now if it's not the nerds anymore because all the nerd culture like pop culture marvels is cool marvel is super cool liking spider-man wasn't cool at one point now it's like oh yeah tom holland he's so hot everyone's cute yeah know. right yeah so oh chris hemsworth oh yeah exactly chris evans oh. now, now it's like yeah right so um i don't know that's a good question zoomers in the chat who who are the outcasts would you do if you're in high school right now or junior high who are the outcasts would you want to what do high school again or the uncool kids would you want to do high school again would i want to do high school again yeah even oh, what you know right now God. Only if I didn't feel like I had to experience it in the present. Like, if I could, like, mess with the space-time continuum. Just watch it. And be in high school, like, as who I am now. Uh -huh. Keep my social media clout. Maybe. Just to see what, what how people changes. Will, yeah, how people react how to much more social How much more, like, socially adequate did I become. Because yeah. <laughs> now I would be, like, it's like a cool kid, you know? But um, as far as do I want to experience it again? Hell no. <laughs> I tried so hard to be cool. Like it was, uh, it was right. Uh, I didn't try. I I learned from a young age, you know, like by elementary, I knew that I wasn't a cool kid. I was always like the teacher's pet. And I was always like this. I was like basically Hermione in school. First, I was like the goody two shoes, never did anything wrong. Smart, always raised my hand to answer questions. Do you know the and actress? The other kids hated that. The actress was also actually a nerd in school. And then she get yeah. picked on so much in school that she has to drop out because of Harry Potter. Like whenever she yeah, answers questions. Yeah, I, I, again, this is a story I read. I'm not sure if it's true or not. 
but there were stories saying that like she would answer a question or whatever. Anytime she say anything in school, someone will someone will go like ten points to Gryffindor. Uh, it was just mm-hmm. it, was, it was it was bad for yeah. her. Yeah, I actually had like my this is like my normal hair color is the brown, and I actually have like really bushy curly because I'm Italian, so I have like super thick coarse hair, and so I actually looked like Hermione. And people would just call me that to 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 mock me when I would raise my hands. <laughs> you know, like, like it's Hermione over here. It's, of course. Oh, but she knows the answer. Yep, there it is. Mm. Yep. <laughs> it just judged me a lot. It's okay. Uh, do you? Do you only Not have really? But yeah. functional. Do you only have older brothers or older and younger? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm the youngest. The only older oh, brothers. Right, the youngest. Which is why I was like. You know, because when you're the youngest, you're always like trying to fit in with the older yes. siblings. Because you're like, let me tag along because be cool. there's no one else to play with otherwise. Mm-hmm. That's why mm-hmm. I w- went super hardcore tomboy mode and like shunned. I didn't like the color pink or purple in my elementary years. Uh-huh. I didn't like dresses. I wasn't even into Disney princesses. I was like, ugh. I did, when I went to Disney World in second grade, I only wanted Animal Kingdom. <laughs> I didn't want any of the princesses. I was like, ew, Magic Kingdom. I'll ride the teacups and I'm out of here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I like spinning, but I didn't want anything to do with princesses. No dresses, no frilly colors, no 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 girly stuff for me. How how is your family, family seeing your whole content creator life? Streaming, photos, all kinds of stuff. Are they very supportive? Um, they 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 are now. At first, because I'm raised conservative Baptist. Oh, that's very different. <laughs> that's a, they weren't they weren't at first. But after they realized, like, hey, wait a second, she's our only kid who never asks us for for money, who never like has the help she needs, and has and has moved out, she got her and shit together, is not getting pregnant, and not getting involved in drugs, and not getting STDs or anything. She doesn't even like bother us, and still talks to us on holidays. This is fine, <laughs> you know. I feel like <laughs> the standard at the end of the day, every parent just wants their kid to like not be a leech and be successful and not be in danger. Which check, 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 all of those things. So there we go. That's great. Yeah. No, I. Uh, I, I I feel more guilty now because like I, my families are also very supportive of what I do, and I feel like I'm not doing good enough. Like I need to make sure. I'm doing well, making sure I'm happy, making sure my parents are happy, and I'm alone. I'm an only child, so I don't have any brother or oh, sister. Okay. So I enjoy mm-hmm. it though. I I don't. Uh, I get I get to hang out, you know, uh, with my parents as a kid. You know, we're gonna travel around the world. You know, I feel like it would be more difficult if I have sibling. My parents asked me if I want any brother and sister. I said no, <laughs> and that was it. Yeah, it's like, do you want a little brother, a little sister? Like, how old were you when they asked? I think I was around five or six. That's my guess. Oh, I was very young. I was very young when I was asked that question. Interesting that they asked. Yeah. Usually the parents just decide to, and the kid, the sibling has to deal with it. Oh yeah. I oh, think. definitely. Um, but I got I got lucky. I, because I was traveling with my parents since I was three around the world. Mm-hmm. We're very traveler type kind of people. Uh, and also Aww. traveling is very easy kind of in Hong Kong. It's because Hong Kong lifestyle is a little bit different too. America is great. You know, you can go to all different places. America is huge. But Hong Kong, you have a very nine to five work style. People work very hard. So traveling is kind of their entertainment, you know, and travel hopping mm-hmm. from one to the other is very easy. Um, like going to Japan, going to Taiwan, you know, like me flying from Hong Kong to Taiwan is only like a hundred dollar flight. Uh, to Japan, it's like a few hundreds. It's it's very cheap, like two or three hundreds, and it's nearby. Um, mm-hmm. the the point is that like no, we, I traveled since I was three years old, and then I was like, they asked me, do I want siblings? Like, f no. Of course, I didn't say f no, but like f that. <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, right. I want all the love to myself and all the travel and all the toys and all the candies. Yeah. So I was a little bit uh, more selfish uh, on that part. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Uh, did your parents want that many kids or did they want it more? I know that's a weird question to ask. No, they, they my mom, see, my mom uh, has had two marriages. So the mm. first time he was, he ended up being abusive. And so she left with my oldest brother. Mm. So he's my half brother. And then the second time around, she wanted to have a girl. I ended up having my brother instead. And then she's like, well, I'm going to try one more time. And then she got a girl. She's like, okay, I'm done. Tie my tubes. <laughs> so <laughs> she wanted a girl. <laughs> And so I, I was the only wanted child that she had. 
Do you want child someday? I I don't know. Like I wouldn't mind it, but if it was up to me making the decision, no. But like if I had a partner and like everything was perfect and like we had our money in order, like we that child would never want for anything. Mm-hmm. Then I would be open to it, but even then, I wouldn't have a desire. I think because I, I just am too dedicated to animals, and they're like my children. <laughs> so I know they're not the same to people who actually have children. They're like, it's mm-hmm. not the, your dog and your child is not the same. But the person who doesn't have children, the dog or my children, you know. So um, the dogs are all my babies. I mean, I'll... if it was the right time and the right person, and they wanted to have a family, I would be open to it. But I wouldn't want to ever have to say no to the child because of money. Because the first feeling I feel like would be like, well, why does why why does Kathy get a trampoline in the backyard and I don't? Mm. It's not fair. And I don't want to be like, because we don't have as much money because we decided to have you instead of saving <laughs> money. You know? <laughs> like I don't want to have to say no to my kids because of a money issue. So it would be like <laughs> or I don't want to have to not be able to afford if college is still a thing, if it's even effective. Right now, it doesn't really matter. But if someday that changes and like schooling is actually important again, then I wouldn't want to have to be like, oh, we can't afford that school. Sorry. You know, that's, it would be like, <laughs> that's a weird yeah, thing yeah. to say. Why can't we afford this? Because of you. <laughs> I, no, I wouldn't know i wouldn't say that to the kid i, I know i know, know but that's just how it's like but uh, like like i had money until you were bored kind of you know? kind of like, ironic i don't yeah. want to have to have that type of thing where i have to say no to a kid because of money problems yeah. so it would have to be like a perfect environment you know like secure in the relationship secure in the partner make sure it's actually something they want make sure they're not going to like change their mind later have like divorce issues make sure if there ever is an issue therapy would be a thing <laughs> So like not break up the family because I feel like that fucks up a kid. Oh yeah, to some degree. I think that so def- it has to be like effect, yeah. a literally perfect situation. And I I know the world doesn't work like that typically, so mm-hmm. probably not. But I mean, we, I would still be open to it. We didn't grow up doing this. That's we didn't think about like this is my job. I'm gonna be streaming or like doing content creation or being a yeah. influencer. That was not even an option. So I'm sure it's gonna change by then. Oh yeah. And right now, like, especially considering, like, my type of lifestyle, like, I thought about it recently because my mom's always like, when are you going to pop out some grandbabies for me? Your brothers are hopeless. So <laughs> I'm like, mom, I hate to break it to you, but just accept the dogs as your grandkids. Because mm, I don't know. Because considering that I'm a live streamer and, like, just online person in general, like, I wouldn't want to bring a kid into this world because can you imagine, like, the social scrutiny they would get? Oh, like, yeah. from, like, their friends, yeah. like, your mom is this? You know, like, they would be, like, w- they have friends constantly trying to leech off of them. Or, like, they would always have, um, like, pedophiles looking at them if they were online at all just because of the amount of followers I have. You know, some of mm-hmm. them have to be pedophiles from a statistic base. Yeah. And so it's just, like, no, I don't want them to have stalkers, and I wouldn't want them to have people trying to use them because of who their parents are. That you know, that is something I so, haven't thought about. Yeah, that is, yeah that's that's worryful. I think it's a bad idea. <laughs> uh, the only time I would be able to have a kid, I feel, is if I disappeared from the internet entirely. Like, yeah, maybe you, you just know? do something else or retire. Yeah, I mean, would you have to? I guess people ask that before too. Like, same as tattoos. Like, oh, when you get older, are you like, are you gonna regret it or something? I don't know. Would it change? Do I have to explain to kids what we do? I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, because I feel like eventually they would get it, but at a younger age, it's hard to explain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, even there's... F- I mean, eventually, one day, like, I want to do, like, you know, animal rescue as my main content. Like, I'll still be tr- streaming, and I'll still be doing, like, ASMR probably occasionally. But, like, there'll be a lot more variety in the content. And eventually, if, if the internet is still, like, live streaming and YouTube creation are still a thing when I'm... Like, in my like late late 30s or something maybe then because then I'll, I'll have transition my content and hopefully go, like the creepy people will have outgrown me you know <laughs> i don't know maybe then it would be more feasible to have online and kids but like right now is not a like yeah. danger zone i feel yeah. yeah as long as you don't have a uh, tiger king situation with your animal stuff <laughs> no have you seen the show uh, I have not watched it because I don't want I don't watch a thing that like alludes to animal abuse. It just makes me cry. So I haven't watched it. It's a little but... bit messy. Uh, it's yeah. they. I mean, that's not too much animal abuse. I think if any, maybe it's kind of hard to tell. It's more like messy people who can't handle being animal caretakers. That's it's more about mm-hmm. the people than the animal. Okay. Yeah. So, 
but it's it's a uh, definitely a strange situation. Um, but I mean, good luck, mm. good luck on the whole uh getting the animal rescue thing. It's it's not easy. Uh, and it- yeah, definitely not. Like I think the overhead. Uh, like I was looking at some of the facilities that run it, and like the reason why I'm like so motivated to make this happen is because they need donations to survive because mm-hmm. their overhead to like run the kind of facility I want to run is like two million dollars a year. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. per just to like to oh, run yeah. the thing, just like to make it possible. Even just because like you alone. have to pay for the land, the facilities. Mm-hmm. Each animal costs roughly a thousand dollars each to maintain over a year's time. Mm-hmm. Each, like a dog is like the minimum, like a thousand dollars a year on average to have. And if you want to have like five to six hundred dogs, it's a lot of money. How, how you know? And then you have to pay employees. You have to have an on-site vet if you're a shelter type system, so they can do spay and neuters and checkups whenever you bring a dog in. Mm-hmm. They have, they have to have a salary. CEO has to have a salary. Mm-hmm. He manages the day to day stuff because you can't run like a, a legit, like nonprofit organization that would want that people would mm-hmm. want to sponsor, like mm-hmm. on a company level and like on a celebrity level. Like they want to sponsor legit stuff, mm-hmm. like a five hundred one. So yeah. yeah, you have to have everything in order. Yeah, and that would and that's expensive. Oh, definitely. So, oh, yeah, that's why I'm like I got to stream every day. <laughs> I still like it, fortunately. I haven't burned out. I don't think at this point I can burn out if I've been doing it for almost four years and haven't felt the burnout. I don't think I will just because I'm so impassioned by something. It's it's. I feel like I'm like a rare case where it's like I found out what I want to do for the rest of my life and I'm very devoted to that. The burnout Most people I think who do streaming are just streaming for the sake of surviving. You know, they're like living mm-hmm. like not with, without a, like an overarching like motivation, just like money. So I can have freedom, but they don't know what that freedom is, right? So it's like, oh, I'm pretty good right now. But they can't so get me, freedom, like, yeah, if they're yeah, spending so much yeah. time streaming. Right. For me, though, I don't need freedom. I just need to be able to pull off my dream because, like, I've actually found, like, the perfect thing. Because a lot of people, when they achieve a goal, they'll find that the journey getting there is more fulfilling than the actual goal because then it's like a now what situation. You know, it's mm-hmm. like a video game. That's why a video game has a business because it's like you complete a game and it was fun getting there, but once you complete the game, now what? You have to find a new game. Mm-hmm. So for this kind of thing, I think as long as I will survive, even with stem cell research, who knows how long we'll, we might be immortal. But um, I feel like as long as I will live, there will always be animals to rescue. So my mission will never be, have an end. Mm. It is just something that I'll be constantly passionate about and keep going. I'll never have a now what. So I think that's why I have like unique situation where I haven't found a burnout yet because I've found a passion that doesn't have an end. So it's like a video game that there is no end to. So there's always something you know? to drive you to keep going. Mm-hmm. <sighs> that's, I feel like that's even more burnout though. <laughs> No, it's it's not because I feel like burnout is like when you don't have a goal in mind and you're just like, oh, I'm doing this thing. What for? I want to do something else right now. But for me, because there's only one thing I want to do, there's only like a certain course that will lead to that, you know? Uh-huh. So it's like I don't think that I can can burn out at this point. So maybe actually give me some more background. Um, animal rescue. <laughs> why, why is it a um, why is that needed? Like, what, are we in a world that animal are being very great and not needing I rescue right now dogs are such pure innocent souls they're like to me they're angels on earth mm. they're innocent they don't have bad intentions there's no bad dogs only bad people who's like you know okay dogs by nature they're loving they they have unconditional love and they don't live very long mm-hmm. and so it's like how shitty is it that a big portion of their lives they might be on the street or they might be in like an abusive situation and to a dog think about it like you have a life a dog is part of your life if you have one you see it when you come home and that's it. But to a dog, you're its entire world. It waits all day waiting for you. And imagine like only getting 10 years of that mm. versus for you, it's part of your life and you're living like potentially 100 years. Yeah. So it's like, like 10 you, times. It's like much less significant. But to a dog, you're its entire life. Oh, yeah. You're gone for eight hours you know? a day. That's like yeah. 80 hours. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, and I feel like there's so many out there who just need a loving home. And so it's like, even if they don't get adopted, because they're not all dogs that people are going to, there's not, all dogs are not adoptable. They have health issues. That sometimes they're just like a breed issue and they're not allowed in a certain area. Like I get it, mm-hmm. but I want to, I want to provide like a, a ranch that dogs can stay at no matter what. Right. It's like, mm-hmm. you can live here forever. I don't mind if you never get adopted. I hope that you will. So I can have more capacity to save more dogs. But if you live forever on the ranch, I'm fine with that. At least you have a home. You're not on the street. You're not starving. You're not 
like being deprived of love and affection that you need in your life to be fulfilled. It's like you have mm. everything you need. I, you basically my dog if you end up never getting adopted, you know? That's nice. So, yeah. And I want to I want to save horses, too. That's like a side thing also. Mo the main thing is dogs. Cause horses are way more expensive. Oh, yeah. That's like a, if I can horses. Because there are so many horses out there that get put down when they get a leg injury on a race. Oh, right, right, right. I, hear, I heard like about it too. On the track, they will put it down because to them, even though the horse would be fine, like it won't be able to race again, mm -hmm. but it could still walk again and have a healthy life. To them, the life of the horse is not worth it to like to their business. Expensive, so they just huh? put down yeah. the horse. Yeah. How old your horses get? And I get? think that's really sad. Horses can live to like mid 30s. Wow. And, and it's so sad because a lot of the horse racing is like anywhere from like two to four years old. Mm. So their life is just being cut short. Like, oh, oh, you can't run anymore. Yeah, fuck you. It's like, <laughs> I'm glad we don't do that to Olympians where we don't like. Right. It's insane. We don't like, oh, you can't, you know, do like swimming anymore. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's so sad. That sucks. Uh, what about um, for, for, so for the dogs that you're going to race? Oh, no, no, sorry, now I remember. Race dog. Isn't that a same situation? Is racing dog a thing? Is that an American thing? Is it a what situation? Sorry, do do they have dog racing in America? Dog racing? Yeah, dog, like running. Oh, racing. Yeah. Yes, they do. They have greyhound racing. Um, I don't think it's... they. I don't think they regard the, the race dogs the same way because dogs aren't as expensive to keep and i feel like people see dogs as companions whereas for horses aren't seen as companion animals too much like dogs in particular can be companion animals and dedicate their existence to the enrichment of people's lives whether it's like just like an emotional uh -huh. um, benefit uh -huh. or like actual service dog benefit sometimes they're like therapy dogs etc and like you want to create a safety net for them so that None fall through the cracks or of not being wanted. You know, it's like mm. I want to have like a home for them to stay at. Yeah. Because they're actually like, they're not only are they precious in themselves, but they can actually help a lot of people. You know, mm -hmm. like a dog can provide you like infinite companionship potentially. Like if you were a lonely person and like you don't have friends like I did, that's how I survived my loneliness because I got dogs, you know? And it's mm -hmm. like they make you feel fulfilled, give you a purpose, give you a purpose to wake up every morning, especially elderly dogs. Like there's um a lot of shelters do like that I follow do like an like a senior for senior program and they have like <laughs> senior dogs. So that senior citizens, if their partner has died or whatever, mm -hmm. they have no reason to wake up. Their life is so lonely. Mm -hmm. And like the senior dog is just chill. It doesn't need a lot of running. But senior dogs are actually like the second most popular dog to get put down in shelters okay. right after pit bulls mm -hmm. because everyone wants a puppy, you know? Mm -hmm. And so senior dogs actually can are very chill. They're already housebroken. They already know their tricks. They already have well manners. They just want like a, chill. a loving environment yeah. to finish their life in. And they can actually provide a lot of benefits to seniors because they're chill too and they can't be as active. And so it's like a perfect companionship to help people. And like there's just not much help for them because in a lot of shelters, they get put down in like a week if they're not adopted. They'll have like a week to that's, be... That's sad. That's yeah. scary. Or they get euthanized. It's like it's been here for a week. It's your time. Time to euthanize you because no one adopted you in a week. I was can you imagine if you lost your dog and it was it wound up in a pound for a week and you didn't know where it was and you were searching for it and in a week it dies? Imagine that's your kid. It's like uh, some like a human kid. It's like, oh, my I kid got lost. A week later, it's like, well, kid, you've been here for too long. Right. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Uh, like, it just makes me so mad. Yeah. Uh, I, I was thinking earlier too. I post about it as well. I wonder, do dogs currently are wondering like pets dog at home? Are they wondering... What they have done right to earn their owners to stay at home every day now because of quarantine <laughs> right, they're like what did i do they're gonna be like so messed up when they go back to right work. if they go back to like, a, like, like a, yeah where'd you go <laughs> you were supposed to be here and now you're gone again <laughs> like ten, like eight hours it's nine hours a day there's like a tiktok friend on that recently too yeah it's like i've been asking my human every day for the past 300 days to stay home with me and finally they are <laughs> 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 it's like oh they're going to be so sad when everyone goes back to work. It'd be such a strange yeah, transition. So they're going to have separation anxiety. Again, it's like, what, 10 hours a day? If you time that by 10, that's like 100 hours. That's more Most than... of their life, they're spent alone waiting for you, especially if you keep them in a crate. Some people don't have yards, you know? Mm -hmm. Most of the dog's life is in a crate. Isn't that sad? 
Yes. Like, I mean, I, I'm barely doing it. I, I have housemates yeah. that help, but I, I'm stuck at home. I'm still like going a little bit crazy every day because of quarantine. Mm-hmm. So, no. Like, they're social creatures. Yeah. They need, they need loving homes. Like, I would go to get like fast food, drive routes, just so I could have some human interactions. <laughs> like, through yeah. the window. No, it, it streaming did that to me long before the coronavirus did. Like, I would go out to the grocery store mm-hmm. and I would be like, <sighs> Like not streaming, it's like, whoa, it's so bright, there's noise, air, what is this, people? Because <laughs> I'm just be used to staying in a stream environment all day at mm-hmm. home. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, thank you so much for being on the show. Best of luck on everything, especially on, you know, oh, your you. sanctuary for dogs and animals in general. Um, how can people find you? On Instagram, I have my main account, Amaranth, and I also have an Amaranth fitness account. You know, it's always good to have a personal account. Mm-hmm. And on Twitter, I have my main one, Amaranth, and then my personal one, Wild Kate, where I talk a little bit more about like industry type stuff and it's more safe for work. Mm-hmm. And on YouTube, I have my main Amaranth channel. It's all spelled the same way. Um, What'd you get a name? I also have an ASMR one. Sorry, I Where did I get the name Amaranth? Yeah. From the flower, kind of, because it's spelled differently. Kind of, yeah. And I was actually just looking up random names back when DeviantArt was still popular, like when I started cosplay, like 2010, <clears throat> I was looking up like Latin names because I'm like, I don't know what to call it. And so Amaranth came up and and I was like, that's kind of nice. But that the regular flower version was taken on DeviantArt. So mm-hmm. I changed it to have the root word for love instead because it sounded the same to me. And that was available. I'm like, I'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <clears throat> I'll take that. Was like, there are so many other names I'd rather have now, but uh, so, but since my social media is already used to that name, I can't change at this point. What would you have works, changed so. it to if this is not the one you picked? Have you thought about I it? I don't want to say, actually, because so use if I ever do like something else, probably at this point, Wildcade, because that's my personal Twitter. I like that. But there are other names that I, I would like to use if I ever like decided to rebrand someday that I won't say because I don't want people to take those Oh, they will names. instantly. But... Yeah, but um, Wild Kate's cool. I already have that on Instagram and Twitter, so it's fine. Do you do TikTok? <laughs> I do. I have Amaranth on TikTok also. Mm. It's, so. How is your TikTok content like on TikTok? Like, are, are people engaging? People loving it? Not. Um, is it sexy, funny? Or I'm not what is very it? consistent. I do. I try to do like every other day originally when I first got it. And then I started doing like every week. And now I'm like every other week if I can because I'm just so busy <laughs> so I, it's hard to grow now on TikTok I find oh, I think is. the first few posts by the algorithm are like so easy in the beginning pushed <laughs> right and now I'm like now especially in quarantine because everyone's posting it's so hard to get like a thing that, that goes viral because every there's so many new videos out every day now and it's such a hit or miss now um mm-hmm. is you either like it's really random like and also it doesn't matter about which quality content it could be the dumbest shit and then you're like Ooh. right some of the stuff i thought was like the the lowest effort and crappiest thing i did ended up doing the best likewise so yeah i, I have a few videos that have a few million views <laughs> no production value no nothing just a cell phone exactly some random yep. videos and that that blow up and it's like cool cool i guess i guess yep. that's the life now all right well anyway yep. Thank you so much for you know being on the show. Uh, you know, once this is over, uh, let me know when you come back out to LA. Let's hang out. Let's grab food, or something. Yeah, grab drinks. Be fun. Yeah, absolutely. I don't go to yeah. Texas too often, but if I do, I'll hit you up. Okay, sounds good. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining tonight. Uh, I you know. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, enjoy. Uh, also, let me know when you do your stream stuff. Uh, your podcast or whatever, whatever you're doing, especially the cosplay one. Let me know. Okay. I'll hop on. Yeah. I'll message you. All right. Well, everyone else, have a great night. Uh, again, you can watch this on Twitch, on YouTube, on everywhere else, like podcasts. You can listen to iTunes, Spotify. It's Modern One Photo. And other than that, have a great night. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.